Jesus Christ. Of, of Nazareth. Nazareth. The Messiah. The promised one. The King. The Savior of the world. Given, given to, to us. us. As a child. It was written long ago. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God, our Everlasting Father. Advent is a story of Jesus, our hope. Our peace. The joy of the world. A representation of God's love. May your hearts always be prepared to receive our King, Jesus. Merry Christmas, Merry everybody. Christmas. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is the Morrison household, and we're excited to have you join us for Christmas Eve with the Morrisons. And so I would like to do this is have everyone introduce themselves. What's up, everyone? I'm Faith. I'm Naomi. I'm Grace. Joanne. I'm Daryl. And I'm Sam. We have one missing, and that's Benjamin, and he's feeling under the weather, so please pray for him. Christmas is important to us, and Christmas Eve is as well, and we always like to celebrate with our Christmas hymn. So I want you to take a listen to this as we celebrate Christ and his coming. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Mankind, bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to. Such a special time in our family. It's such a special 
place in our heart where we have some great memories about Christmas. Mm. And I would just love for the kids just to share, you know, how have you been made happy by Christmas? Can you share what, something that has made you happy, a gift that you've received? I think for me, um, even aside from the presents and things like that, I just love always having family and friends together. I think having people around, um, laughing, joking, eating sweets, I think that is what makes me the happiest about Christmas. What about a gift? Has anybody received, like, what was your favorite gift that you received at Christmas? I can go favorite and least favorite. <laughs> um, my favorite of all time was all my friends at the time were getting Nintendo DSs, and it was the new brand. I mean, the new kind. It was, like, a DSi, so it had a camera, and you could take selfies mm. on it. So that kind of been Cutting it. edge. Yes, it was, yeah, <laughs> revolutionary. <laughs> With our DSs. So that Christmas, I opened it up and it was like a um, periwinkle DSi. I think that was the best gift. I remember, I remember that. What was your least favorite least gift? Least favorite. Funny because it was periwinkle too. <laughs> that Christmas. I know what it was. You do. Because you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> but I got, I asked for gray knitted ups <laughs> and mom bought me. Periwinkle. Blue, periwinkle blue, knitted eyes. You wore them. Every day. You wore them. I, no, I wore them because I mean they were expensive, but I had big feet too, so they were blue, already attractive. Then me being eleven years old, wearing a size eleven, had these big clonkers. <laughs> like, but you well, recognize the value in yeah. that gift, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, came from the heart, <laughs> and it was expensive too. For me, the gift that made me the happiest was the one we received last year, um, our Apple Watches. It, I think it just made me so happy because I wasn't expecting the gift. Yeah. yeah. And so I just wasn't to. <laughs> but it hurt his, uh, his pocket a little bit. But I wasn't expecting it, so it was just nice to have a gift that others gave to you that you didn't necessarily have on your list. Yeah, yeah. good. Let's see. Um, I think for me, mine wasn't a physical gift that you gave to us, but um, when we went to the homestead, Ooh, having that experience nice. together yeah. as a family, that was really fun. And now that we're older, I think we realize, one, how expensive that was to get all mm. seven of wow. us up at the homestead. But just having that time, some of my favorite memories come from yeah. tea time at the homestead, yeah. like running Josh. around in the middle of the day, <laughs> Garcon. So, yeah, that would be my favorite yeah and you know what I love to now that you're saying now that you're older right mm -hmm. because you think about like at Christmas right whenever we're given presents it's like what's given to us but not now that you're older you're recognizing hey that came with a cost yeah. right yeah. and you think about Jesus coming into this world and the gift that he is to us and um, and how we should respond, you know, now that we're older, we should give to him, you know? Yeah. And that's awesome because I think a lot of times during Christmas, this is the moment where we talk about joy mm -hmm. and the joy that God brings to us. And it's not just in things, at least material things. Mm -hmm. There's so many things about Christmas that really blesses us. And so I believe that, uh, that goes right in line with our next Christmas song are the herald angels sing mm -hmm. from our freshly and newly established VGC hey. community choir. So let's go oh. listen to this.
Well, when I think about just the time that we have together, one of the things I want to make sure that we're encouraged by as we talk about the Advent season is really Jesus coming. And his coming should produce something inside of us, whether it's anticipation or expectation. And even during our series, we've talked about that. And what has really prompted my heart is probably when I look at Matthew chapter two and uh, the wise men in preparation for Jesus, they said this after they saw the star, they came and they came to Jerusalem and they said, where is he who was born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and we have come to worship him. When I think about our preparation for Jesus, there seems to be this sense of anticipation that we all have, but sometimes we can miss it if we're not readily uh, attentive and if we're not looking for Christ. And so in this season, that's really what I, I want us to do is to prompt our hearts, our minds, and our spiritual eyes to be ready and to be looking for Christ. And I'd love for each and every one of you all to talk about that. What does it mean to ready yourself and to look for Christ in this season of Christmas? We've talked during the season about joy, uh, love, peace, hope. How do we ready ourselves for those things that Christ has brought to us? So I'd love to start with you, Samuel, then you, Joanne, and then we'll still go over here with the girls. Um, yeah, I think preparation and readiness, it boils down to, I think, like a focus. I think when someone's preparing for something, you're kind of in your zone, right? Like you're kind of, you, you've, you've tuned out all the outside no, noise and you're focused on that. And so I think when it comes to joy, you know, this joy we're called to experience throughout this time, I think there has to be that focus and readiness to block out any other thing that you would try to find joy in, right? Like we can find joy in presence and the lights and the trees and even the family time. But realistically around this time of year, we're called to focus on the joy that's been set before us, right? The joy um, of the news that Jesus um, has come, but he's also coming back again. So I think for me, it's always just having kind of like horse blinders and focusing on the joy that's not connected to the, you know, commercialized Christmas, but truly um, the celebratory Christmas, which is Jesus. So I think that's for me, just trying to focus on that as much as I can. How about you, Joel, when you think yeah. about love? Well, when I think of love, I think the first thing I think of is um, my ability to love, the Bible says, is we love because he first loved us, right? And so um, it's just responding to the love of God that he's already shown and demonstrated to us. Mm -hmm. And how do I respond to his love is just by really opening up my heart and allowing him in, you know, allowing him in to any situation that I may find myself in, um, really allowing his grace to fall upon me so I can experience his love for me in that moment. Um, and so, yeah, when I think of love, I think it's responding to the love of God that he first demonstrated to us. Very good. Girls, how about you all? Uh, so in Young Adults recently, we were talking about um, Mary and Joseph and kind of what stuck out to us the most about um, the role they played in bringing Jesus into the world. And um, things didn't quite make sense for Mary. And despite that, she still chose to give God her yes. And as a result of that, she just had this overwhelming sense of peace throughout her whole pregnancy um, and her marriage to Joseph. There was just this calmness to it. Um, and I feel like for me, especially in this season, I have felt that same sense of peace and just kind of giving God my yes and just entrusting him with whatever he has for me. Um, and there's just like, I guess, this stillness and this calmness that comes as a result of that. So with Jesus coming, I feel like there's this sense of like calmness and stillness in the world um, that no matter what's going on in your life and like whatever the circumstances are, that there's just this calmness and this peace. Very good. Um, for me, I think it's more so preparing my heart to be receptive to what he has to give me during the season. So instead of focusing on like the lights and everything that comes with Christmas, focusing on what he has to bring me and what he brought me through his coming. Um, so yeah. I think just overall, the biggest thing that's stood out to me is the different characters that we've like dove into during this Christmas season, whether they were prepared or not, when they had an encounter with Jesus, all of them made a decision to make space in their life for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And some of those 
that required sacrifice and it wasn't comfortable. And for us too, it can require sacrifice and it cannot be comfortable, but the reward of Jesus is so much bigger than the sacrifice that we have to make. So while it's not fun, maybe, you know, not getting caught up in the commercialization of Christmas, our reward is knowing that Jesus is the best gift we could have ever received. I um, I think about that as well. And many people, at least from the Bible, when saw this, uh, when Christ when Christ was either revealed, if there was some uh, aspect of who he was that was uh, displayed, um, it was very clear that God was making himself known or making his son known. And in that, in each instance, those people had to then respond. And so Mary, be it unto me according to your word. The shepherds, they had to go find Jesus. And the wise men, they would come after him. And so uh, as we sing this next Christmas hymn, and I believe it is from our children's choir, um, what is really encouraging to me is the very title, Come All Ye Faithful. So let's take a listen.
celebrating Jesus because it's his birthday. Oh, what about Jesus? Hanging out with um, family and friends and um, celebrating Jesus. Presents. Presents. To celebrate Jesus' birthday. Ooh. God. God. Can you tell me what you want for Christmas? Um, Barbie stuff. For Christmas, Pokemon. A purse. A backpack. Um, a, a cat. Do you remember what Miss Faith said she wanted for Christmas on the count of three? One, two, three. A husband! Yes. What do you think Jesus wants for Christmas? Right? Um, donuts. Flowers. Flowers. Like, us to be happy, not like sin anymore. Avery, what do you think Jesus wants for Christmas? A new wife. Jesus wants a new wife? <laughs> Did he have an old one? Um, I think God, I think he wants us to celebrate God and all the stuff he did, he did for us, like for the whole rest, like for the whole year, and then there's going to be like a, always a new beginning. Obey him because we love him so much. For us to be nice. Happy birthday, Jesus! Happy Well, I hope that you enjoyed your time with us. And before we leave, we just all want to say Merry Christmas. We also want to say thank you so much to uh, Avery Hudson yes. for lighting the Advent candles. And then also uh, our youth who participated in our Advent skit. Uh, we're really excited about what God is doing. And we know this is going to be an awesome time. And so we pray that you have a great time receiving and anticipating Christ and celebrate him on this Christmas day. God bless you. We'll see you. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.